Okay, cool. and, uh, and welcome to this, uh, this first session, which is, uh, I guess, virtual and not virtual at the same time, because uh, this is a combined session with the virtual jug and uh, also night hacking. If Stephen were to, to lean in. Hello. <laughs> uh, Stephen, owns, Stephen owns another, <laughs> another uh, virtual group, I guess, called uh, nighthacking.com. Um, and that, that's been around a little bit, a fair bit longer than the virtual jug. So, uh, so for, for the VJUG guys, feel free to uh, check out nighthacking.com. For the night hacking guys, please feel free to, to come and say hi at virtualjug.com. Um, and today we're talking, we've got two new speakers, um, uh, Manny and hi, Simon. Uh, Daniel. Hello. Both from the UK, both from the London Jug, right? Yeah. That's right, yeah. Awesome. JC Jug. And uh, how are you enjoying Javaland today? Uh, it's been busy, fantastic. We've had a presentation this morning again on OpenJDK and uh, seeing a lot of people in the area here. Uh, yeah. A good keynote. Yeah. Keynote was good. Keynote like, was good. The 20, uh, 20 years Twenty of years Java past. Sure. Looking a bit to the future as well. Um, it's great chats, people already, Mario. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stuff. yeah. We, we shared uh, stuff which we'll share with you in a minute. And, yeah, uh, we yeah. Had some good feedback so far. So yeah, all good. Yeah, cool. exciting. Awesome. And uh, and so the reason we're we're not just virtual today is we're live from a conference in Germany, just a place called Fantasia Land, which is uh, kind of like a theme park. And uh, and yeah, Job Land is a second second year in a so second year old conference now. Yeah, for, we were here uh, last year as well. Actually. Yeah, we yeah. were here last year. Yeah. Yeah. Last year yeah. Yeah. We were, yeah. yeah. And uh, they got about they got about a thousand people. Um, so it's going to be packed. a good conference. And today, what are you going to be talking to us about? So we're going to show a little bit about like we've been talking a lot about Open JDK, but today we're going to show a little bit about how you build something, how you change something in the JDK, and a, and a sneak peek into J, in, into Java nine. Uh, especially the new the, module the stuff, new module stuff yeah, image, 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 yeah, and and a little bit about like the backdoor tricks of how to update the image without having to wait for like five or ten minutes of compilation, mm -hmm. uh, which I uh, earlier spoke to you about. Uh, so we can do both on JDK eight and JDK nine. So trying to get that rapid uh, feedback cycle. When exactly, when yeah. Stuff. It's all time permitted. So let's see how the de the demo gods uh, are with us. <laughs> if they're happy, then uh, everything goes rolling and smooth. Uh, otherwise, we'll be just showing one thing and. And that'll be it, yeah. Okay, awesome. And for anyone online uh, watching, if you, uh, anyone in person here, just throw something at us and ask a question if you want to interrupt. Uh, online, if you either, you can either ping us on IRC, and I'll be monitoring that in the virtual jug, which is uh, freenode hash virtual jug, or you can do that from the virtual jug site. Um, and from night hacking site, how do you want people to ask questions? Okay, so virtual, so night hacking people, if you, uh, if you, you can view in the same place, so uh, freenode hash or pound virtual jug, or if you go to virtualjug.com, you can ask questions directly through there. So let's get started. Yeah, so just to give you an overview, we'll have a few presentation slides and then give you a hands-on demo, and we, we'll close with Q&A if there's time, and uh, that'll be it. So um, Dan, what do you think um, the title of the slide uh, means to you? Why, do you? why do you think I striked off that JDK there? Uh, and, yeah, and, and, we, and I, I've written Java instead. There. We, what do you think that there's a catch to this? We get asked this a lot, Marty, don't we? We, yeah. we, do, we travel around to quite a few conferences and, and do this kind of gig. And people often confuse the Java platform, don't they? Or the Java yeah. language with yeah. the platform in terms of the JDM. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's what you're going for here. New yeah. title, wouldn't it? Yeah. So yeah. Being very clear, there's the Java yeah. language, JDK, yeah. Yeah. and the JVM. Yeah. Spot on. Yeah, so, so there is a, a virtual difference. At the same time, there isn't a difference when we speak about it. So you will be building the JDK, but you'll also be building the language and the platform together. And you normally don't see the difference, but when you see the repos, the different folder structure, and you give the different commands, you'll see you're actually touching the language and the platform separately. And they are separate in the, in the source code, as you say, the yeah. OpenJDK source code. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But when we speak to each other, we don't refer to them as separate. We say Java, which we actually mean the language and the platform. Uh, sometimes we say JVM, which we, when we mean the platform, and maybe the giant language in it. So, so there's the difference. So let's get started. So what's OpenJDK? It's like a million lines of uh, <laughs> explanation of what it is. Um, so we've simplified it, right, Dan? Pretty much. Uh, what do you think it is? It is sim simply, but reference implementation for Java. No, no money. Ever exactly. Java yeah. 7, a few years back now, uh, it is the reference implementation based, you know, which Oracle used to build their JDK, IBM used to build their JDK as well. Yeah, so, Red Hat and everybody else who you download JDK images from, they all use the OpenJDK. It's, it's the central pool. 
Uh, it's also free and open source, isn't it? Everybody can jump into it, isn't yeah. it? Everybody can look at the source we'll code. We'll show a bit more in a minute, Marlon. Yeah, you yeah. literally jump on, you can clone the repos using um, Mercurial, yeah. HG, uh, and have a look. Actually, I find it, when I first started um, playing around with this, it's really fun to actually look at the, the Java classes and language stuff that you use every day in your day-to-day yeah. work. Yeah. Look at the double class, look at the yeah. random class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, we, oh, we'll, be, we'll be touching some of those uh, in a little bit, isn't it? Um, so we did say earlier, right, source code to build your language and the platform, so not just the language or not just the platform. Yeah. Um, also, we get a chance to learn about the interns of the language and the platform, which we don't get a chance for many other languages. Uh, I don't know of another language other than Java that does that. There's in, probably a few others. Yeah, source code there's, actually, there's, like, there's C Sharp now recently. Yeah, yeah. C -sharp, but this has been there for quite some time now, isn't it? And it's yeah. nice to look behind the curtain, so to speak, exactly. of the language that yeah. we use every day. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's developers. Yeah. So what does the OpenJD cons consist of? So there are two angles to look at it, isn't it? So earlier I mentioned to you about repos. So the OpenJDK is actually a collection of seven or eight repos. And it's been written in two, primarily two main languages, Java itself and, and C++. And you'll actually see from the, from the image on the right, the pie chart on the right, to my right, maybe to your left, um, the blue indicates that Java is written in Java and a certain percentage in C++. A lot of people find the, the Java written in Java quite strange, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that next. So that brings us to bootstrapping. So Java written in Java means you've got to use Java to build Java. So if you see from the image here, we're using the, an existing JDK, using the a new source code, which is OpenJDK, and we are building a new JDK from that, which will be the next version of the, the version we used. So for example, OpenJDK 7 was used, was built using Open, uh, JDK 6, yep. and then we got JDK 7 out of that, and so on and so forth. There. It's a little bit like the film Inception. Many of years at home have seen the film Inception. It's like stepping exactly. inside the dream to step yeah, inside the dream. Yeah. <laughs> similar, something similar. Um, we also have another concept called boot images, which we, we have in detail in, in another section in this slide deck. We won't cover that now, but which actually in short means you can first, you first build an image of, uh, of JDK, say, 9, and then you use the JDK 9 again on OpenJDK 9 to build JDK 9 again. Yeah. Uh, primarily, we see that by doing this, you, you benefit a lot because the JDK 9 compiler is smarter than the JDK 8 compiler. Certain and optimizations. Yeah, exactly, and I, the binaries are going to be different. Of course, not, I, I haven't seen any in practice um, a comparison, but it'll be interesting to know what the differences oh, are. At yeah, the yeah. Um, so some of these commands we would use because uh, OpenJDK has been built using the old Make system, Mercury, and all that. So we got to get familiar with the Make commands. It's worth mentioning, actually. We're going to give a demo in a minute, aren't we? So exactly. Appreciate that like, people at home probably haven't seen the code. Sure. Stuff, but we're going to show you that. In a yeah. Minute, so. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so just quickly, modern day tooling. We all know Git clone, repo name. Git pull origin master to get down yeah, all my, the my, latest changes. My day job, yeah. yeah, we do that on a, uh, MVN clean install that basically has the source code ready, installs it. Unfortunately, those are not the exact steps for building OpenJDK. We instead we have HG clone, URL address, a name. Uh, and just worth mentioning, HG is Mercurial. Mercurial, right? yeah. that's right. Which is yeah, like very similar to Git, yeah. but yeah. Now some, some, different. some different. something similar to HG HG pull. Uh, HG pull or git pull is get sources simply because OpenJDK is made up of so many different repos, you can't have one HG command to get all the repos down. So the get source simplifies that for us. There's several routes, money, as exactly. opposed to like one sort of um, route with many nested yeah. directories. Like Absolutely. Many yeah. Routes, yeah. yeah. And then you do the make clean images instead of doing the maven clean install. Now the images is quite similar to looking at the JDK or the JRE that you download from. Uh, Oracle's website or IBM or another uh, Almost like Java, JVM. Yes, yeah. yeah. We'll see that in a second because you'll see a folder called images. Um, so ne the next command is actually not Maven clean install or any other. It's to basically uh, configure your environment first and then basically run the, run the uh, the, 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 the next make images. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, 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 so we will basically switch demo? quickly to the demo mode. Quick question, quick question before we go there, uh, from Amorphous and IRC. Why do, you use, why do you decide to use Mercurial, not Git? So, uh, well, Dan, do you want to go, go explaining why Mercurial, is it, is, is not Git? Is this a history lesson? It's, or it's a very brief history lesson in that we haven't actually got sort of control of that money. Have we? Yeah. So the, the Oracle repositories, and at the time it was um, 
the actual version control uh, was chosen, it was Mercurial, wasn't it? That's right, I don't yeah. I think Git was particularly popular at the time, so Mercurial was yeah. there. And yeah. just Mercurial's great, there's a few subtle differences. Um, the big thing is Mercurial, you can't rewrite history, which is superb for something like the JDK, whereas you don't want to change or be able to change what's been changed in the past. That sounds a bit a self-referential thing, but with Git, you can rewrite history, effectively changing history, yeah. but you don't want to do that on something as important as the JDK. So Mercurial's yeah. good from that respect. Okay, yeah. So... That, I hope that answers uh, his question. Cool, thank you. Cool, so now we're going to quickly dive into a live demo, um, and that would entail, uh, so what, what we want to do is get sources. So imagine you've done the git, the HG, pull, the HG clone, and you've done the get sources. So the next thing we will do is... Time, Mark, yes, that's right. How long, how long does that take? Um, 20 minutes, depending on your hard, your, how performant your hardware is. Uh, it's faster on. on I I've had, yeah, well. yeah. I've seen it been built in under nine minutes. The whole thing on a, on an EC2 uh, cloud in, in, in instance, but that was a headless uh, Ubuntu box. Uh, but on my machine, it takes anywhere from twenty to thirty minutes, depending on how big changes. That's the actual build, though, yes. Simon's yes. asking about the downloading a source. Oh, downloading the source. Uh, Pretty quick, isn't it? Depending on your connection. Yeah, it's it's under under five minutes or so. Okay. But I I just want to skip that step here and just go on to do the bash configure, which I showed earlier. So basically, this will go through your whole system, detect all the different components that it needs for building, and it'll say yes or no if it has them. And at the end of it, uh, it'll give you a green flag whether we want to go further and build. And it gives you a summary of some of the things it's detected, like your operating system, your, uh, your hardware, your, uh, your processor architecture, uh, the, the GCC compiler, C++ compiler, it'll also detect the boot JDK, which is going to use. Yeah, it's worth yeah. noting, actually, Marnie. I noticed you only use the um, bash configure. Yeah. And yeah. You've already set your boot JDK, haven't you? Uh, so yes. On the slides, we actually mentioned dash, yes. dash boot JDK. Yeah. Really, but here, we've already said it. You yes. can see, actually, viewers at home can see it yeah. under the tools yeah. summary, back sort of uh, yeah. halfway down the screen. Absolutely. Good spot there. Yeah. So uh, it also knows how many cores you've got, because earlier on the slides, you saw something like this command, make jobs equal to something. So by that, by default, it'll pick up the, it'll make use of the, the maximum number of cores it can to optimize the build. And parallelize the exactly, build. Exactly, uh, parallelize the build. But you can control it to down to a lower number or another number. And it's, it's quite smart. It'll know if you give it a number that it can't handle, it'll just skip. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's get down to um, make images. So, so imagine we've already done the configure and it was successful. Uh, we make it uh, build its images. So by images, what we mean is we saying that we use the source code of OpenJDK, build me the JDK and the JRE that I can use in my runtime. So it's the same JDK and the JRE we download from a, from a vendor. Um, a lot of us used to do like, go to Oracle, my, my exactly, yeah. Oracle downloads and then get in the JDK, or you can just get the JRE if you just want the JRE. Like, yeah. A lot of developers get both, don't they? Yes. Uh, the disclaimer here I would like to make is that although Oracle does a lot more other things to the JDK before you download it, over here it's quite a vanilla J JDK. It's got only the things that, that, that are there in the OpenJDK's code base. Yeah, that so that's, that's, the, that's just a disclaimer to it. So it's not 100% the same as the JDK you would download from a vendor. Um, so whilst this is happening, uh, what we could do is um, give you a, a sh uh, okay, that, that's really quick. It took 47 seconds, as you can see, without any changes. <laughs> that's good. Um, so that's interesting, but it would be more interesting to know how quickly we can make a change to the OpenJDK and see its effects. So I've got this very small program here, which I was showing earlier to uh, some of us in the previous presentation. Um, so we, we, chose, um, we chose a class called random, and I writ I've written a class, uh, client program, which basically, uh, which I will show you in a second, which makes use of the random, uh, which probably you can all see now here, which makes use of the random client, of uh, the random class, and all it does is it uh, calls the next int function twice, mm -hmm. stores them, and then compares them, and if it's the same, then it'll print a message saying, hey, it's the same, same random number. If it's not the same, then it'll say, hey, it's different random numbers. Uh, so what we'll do is we will make a change to the random class so that this client program is affected, and we'll go through certain steps, and uh, we'll see how that works. So we're effectively changing the randomness. Of right. JDK. So just to make sure that, by default, the random class works and behaves just the way it's supposed to work, uh, I also have another client program, which, since I'm quite lazy typing these commands, which basically what it does is it, it'll 
compile the cl uh, client program and run it and show it to you that the random numbers it's generating is actually the random numbers you would get from your Java class. So let's, let's run that and see what we get. Um, any guesses, uh, Daniel, uh, Simon? What are we going to, going, to, going to see? Real quick, real quick. Oh, time out. <laughs> uh, yeah. So oh, you do, numbers. yeah, they are random yeah, numbers. Different number then, isn't it? Yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, oh you expecting same numbers? <laughs> well, you never know your luck, do you? All right. <laughs> you want to try me running that once again? <laughs> OK, so what I have effectively done is to show that we are using JDK 9 and that the binaries were built and run from the image that we just created after building OpenJDK. Um, I have basically outputted the version numbers there and all other, run other information about the binary, uh, including the random numbers and a message at the bottom saying that these numbers are random. So what we will now do is, do you know where the random class is situated? Do you know where, which, which repo it sits in? Uh, I've already given you the clue with one letter there. Java.util. Uh, yes, but in the OpenJDK, it sits oh. slightly deeper. Yeah, so it's in the JDK repo, in the source folder, in the Java base, folder, and then in the shares subfolder, and then the classes subfolder, and then the Java util folder, and then the random class. So how would you find that if you didn't know? Uh, good question. How would you find it's it? Worth you know? mentioning like here, in terms of the Java base, it, often we correct for a lot of stuff. So yes. Looking around, we just, we, the good old classic correct. Yeah. But it's worth mentioning that share in that example is um, shared across all the um, implementations. So be it Linux, be it Mac, be it Windows, that kind of thing. There is sometimes uh, actual infrastructure specific versions of classes that call out to native functionality, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so the share yeah. is a good place to start and a good bit of graphing margin. It's, it's, yeah, it's a good, good spot because a lot of the folder structure in the OpenJDK has operating system folder names in there. So just now I've just, if you can see at the bottom in red, AIX, Linux, Mac, o, Mac OS X, Share. Share means shared across oh, all these operating systems. Solaris. So these are Solaris. operating still a thing, Unix, yeah. <laughs> Windows. These are operating system specific classes that are in there. Okay. But the share contains that is something that's common to all those classes. So the other question, how do you know where what is? I think we'll show that in a second, the moment the build starts. So good oh, question I, there. I think you're, uh, nice yeah, you know yeah, where yeah, I'm yeah, going yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I used to for that yes. Yeah. Um, so let's go and change the random class. You know we made this mistake earlier this morning, huh? What was that mistake? Yeah, we did a little. We yeah. Did, we tried to do a sort of so demo early, yeah, we, we, we learned from our, we've learned from our mistakes. We we got bitten by the demo by demo gods. This is agile programming. In it action. is. It is. So we've spotted yeah. the right method we want to change so that anything anything calls that method in, in this case the next int calls that method is going to return the number we want so anybody wants to shout out some numbers i'll pick somebody we from need the crowd a random number from the audience. mark's looking at us so mark do you have a number for us 72 card, 72 mark. then do you see 72 there on your screen so just so that it's so that you know that it's not something i chose um, so what do you think we should do next daniel now that i've changed the random class i know i've changed and saved it what do you think is the next thing I should do that's sensible? Yes, yeah, so fundamentally, I mean, we need to make sure that change is incorporated into our JRE, don't we? In so the JDK and the JRE? JDK, yeah. yeah, so Spot we need on. to actually co um, recompile. So do I run this command for that? You can do. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so actually, whilst we were hacking on this, uh, we hold a lot of hack days in London. Uh, I and Richard Warburton, who was another uh, OpenJDK contributor, uh, we were asking each other, uh, what do I do if I change a bunch of classes, but I don't want to wait 10 minutes for this build to happen, because this incremental build can also take a long time. So in JDK, in OpenJDK 8, uh, we would be able to inject the compiled classes, all the classes that you change, compile them and inject them into the RT jar, and I it's ready, it's ready to just use. Just to be at home, like what the RT jar is? Because not everyone might know what RT jar is. Do you want to tell us what the RT I'll, jar is since you brought, you brought it up? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so basically the RT jar contains all your class files that are loaded in runtime in short. Yeah. When you, when you uh, boot up your, your Java program. Mm. Uh, and, and in fact, by injecting this compile class into it, the next time you boot up your Java program, those classes will get loaded and any program, any client program that uses those classes We'll, we'll get the immediate byte, byte code from there. With the JDK 9, this is different. We yeah, don't have the RT jar anymore, and we just bumped into a folder called uh, modules this morning, which had a few .j image folder, uh, files, and they are in effect like the RT jar, but in the modular fashion. I, I heard that broke IntelliJ removal of the RT jar. 
there's there's a way to fix that. There's a way to fix that. To touch it. Touch, yeah. Touch Yeah. So um so the way it's definitely something actually to recruit to use at home. And with the Java nine JDK nine changes, there's gonna be a lot of testing required money, isn't there? Exactly. A lot of tools do rely on RTJ do rely on RTJAR. So just just its presence, right? Exactly. So we're really keen actually as part of this sort of slightly separate to what we're talking about today. But if anyone wants to get involved and help out, we'd yeah. love them to do that. And one really good way is testing all their tools and all their open source li frameworks and libraries yeah, yeah. against Java 9. We, we do have a project for that, right? Testing early. Yes, of yeah. course. Of course yeah. Yeah. So yeah. as part of the OpenJDK, we have a uh, uh, test Java early project, a uh, sub-project, where we take all the open source projects, especially our favorite ones, um, we build them yeah, using JDK 9, Open JDK 9 or JDK 9, the early access. Uh, we compile them, we run all our tests in them, and we run the runtime in them uh, in a production, or in a, not production environment, but in a test environment. And we, we record all the, uh, the, 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 the results or responses at every stage. And if there are problems at any of these stages, so we report both to the Open JDK team and to the owners of the Open, JDK, of the open Source project saying, uh, these things went wrong, maybe you want to have a look at it. It could be a problem in either ends or both yeah. ends. Uh, and and, and that feedback to exactly. Exactly. the bug yeah. the base, that kind of thing. Yeah. You've got yeah. issues. And we can fix the problems way, way early in the process rather than towards you know post release and stuff like that. And, and in terms of committers on the project, is it is it the vast majority Oracle or is it a mix? I think money oh well, actually Martin's probably uh, back at back at base is probably the best person to answer this, but I think it's a mix now, Simon. There's quite a few Oracle Ware uh, ones, because Oracle mm -hmm. sort of are the stewards of obviously of, of Java mm -hmm. and they've got a lot of great knowledge in house. But there's quite a few from Red Hat, uh, IBM, yes. there's quite a few independents. Yeah. So um I think Well Twitter ha Twitter commits a lot. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. So Twitter commits. I think stuff. there's a little, there's a sort of rules on how you become a committer as well mm -hmm. in terms of you know you contribute various patches, then you get eventually committer status. And in terms of in terms of contributing your patches, if so so if people wanted to actually try this at home and actually play with it, contribute a patch. Uh, what are the chances of them actually contributing a patch and it actually getting accepted? In all honesty, it's probably best to uh, come and have a chat to us, even like via IRC, via yeah. you know, um, Twitter or whatever, because it's a little, you have to jump through a few hoops. I mean, a project of this size and scale, uh, and it, you know, JDK powers a lot of mission critical stuff, there's obviously a few very sensible gateways in the process in terms of you can't just um, fork and pull like say a lot of open source projects can. Um, but it's totally doable. You've got coding money. Yeah, you? yeah, I have, I've committed. Have a chat a with us. Have a yeah. chat with the other people on the adoption um, mail, uh, mailing group, which we'll mention at the end of the talk, mm -hmm. um, and we can totally help you out with that. Best thing is to do though is like Marnie's demoing now is to get started, get comfortable playing with the yeah. code, get to understand the open JDK. Yeah. yeah, and then we can show we'll show the person at home um, a bug uh, database and a few other things. Can't we? Yeah, we'll yeah, like absolutely. Of how to yeah. But involved. but you know the you know about the better F project, right? Oh, yes, yeah, totally. Yeah, like so that's, thing, that's yeah. like going to be the next step, how to do the same contributions using the GitHub model. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. There's a wrapper, effectively, around the, yeah. like the Mercurial repo tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very, very cool thing going on in London that we've been part of. Yeah, like yeah, so, so it won't be, so the OpenJDK, if we go that route, won't be like how it has been where you need to be like a seasoned OpenJDK developer to commit. It'll be as if you, you fork the repos, you make changes to it, you commit, and your changes are automatically picked up, recognized. Request, yeah, and the like whole review process, following the GitHub, uh, the the Open JDK rules and regulations, and all the different, uh, yeah, you know, all yeah, all yeah and all the different yeah, dots yeah. that we got to do on the I and the crosses on the T. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, we still have this building. So in the meanwhile, I will show you. So earlier, Simon, I mean, you asked this question about how do you know when, where, what is. So I have this curiosity, what lies underneath. So what I've done is I've put together a whole set of commands which we can run now and which we will in a second with uh, showing the directory structures of uh, what, what, a folder, what contains in a folder. So let's pick up, let's say, so the build folder is still in use, uh, but we could probably go and look at the source folder, isn't it? So let's let's go to this folder here and run a, run one of those three commands, shall we? Yeah. It might so be, I'm going to. Might be a bit small, money. So let's let's jump to the actual command line and we can. Uh, yeah. Well, not yeah. small anymore. That's good. Good point there. So I'm going to just copy this command from here. As you guys know, I'm a bit lazy again when it comes to uh, commands and typing commands. Uh, I'm going to paste that command here. Oh. Oh, uh, it says no such directory because I am already in that directory. <laughs> so it's tricky to type. Yes, it? and um, I'm not going to type in this, so I'm going to copy that again. And I have a feeling that it might trim off the space. 
Oh, it did. OK, so that's going to show us this, the contents of the Java utils folder. Remember, we changed the random class mm. in the Java utils yes. folder, but these are the other packages mm. in the folder. So Regex yeah, so these are the, the, the project folders. Sorry, these here. But these are the packages, which also look like folders, in which the, the classes or the Java so source what, of once the class. get down to the classes, man, it's pretty much what we're used to seeing as developers, aren't we, when we do yeah. imports? Yeah. Kind of thing. So, so that's, that's what I do to, to find out what's in there. But nice oh, yeah, over here I did say minus Ds to just see the directories, but I'm going to just release that and you, you can now see, you can now see all the, all the Java classes, the Java source files under each of those packages. Uh, and and uh, some of these are probably your favorite ones. Uh, like this one is like the concurrency uh, package, Java util concurrency, uh, and spans quite a bit, isn't it? And then you have the Java utils date. Uh, this one looks like the lambdas, isn't it? Oh, Java yeah. utils function, by consumer, and all that. Oh, yeah, by function, yeah. by my operator. Yeah. Yeah. And it's then, nice to have a look around. It's yeah, like absolutely. So this is, this is what I do to explore, to, to quench my curiosity mm -hmm. of what sits where. And that's how I get ideas of, oh, I can change that, or I can do that. In the meanwhile, let's have a look if the build's ready. Oh, yes, it's ready. It took 6 minutes, 41 seconds. The incremental build. Quite some time, right? Wow, build. So, yeah. <laughs> well, now we're going to use the same um, client program and, and, and build it using the new image that we just built. So rerun our random Re yeah, experiment. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So right. I'm going to run the same command there. And let's see what happens if the demo gods are happy with us. <laughs> hey, hey, 72. <laughs> Where is Mark? He must he'd probably be happy he seeing left. that. He left during the build. Oh, goodness. It's too long. I'm going to maximize <laughs> that to show 72. That, so, That's so, victory. Yeah. So, and, 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 to, and to prove that uh, it has actually been changed, I can say hg diff. And you can see, yeah, you can see that that file is indeed being changed. You've, uh, you've tried to sell this JDK to a few casinos, haven't you? And I have, and unfortunately, <laughs> failed. Like money, you answer, shouldn't be so. saying this online, though. You know, I could get into a lot of trouble. Um, <laughs> your sales skills aren't as good as your programming, man. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd be in trouble, wouldn't we? Yeah, that that as well. So I'm never going to apply for a sales job. <laughs> yeah, for that matter. Okay, so um, that is in short. Um, how you change the JDK, how you use the change JDK on a client program, and you'll see the client program behave differently. Um, and this, in fact, is a patch that you're looking at that if I submit, will get heavily rejected. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So no one's going to take the random class anymore, isn't it? it yeah. yeah. So um, what I want to quickly show, which I should talk to you guys earlier about, Simon, you want to look at the, um, the, 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 the J image thing that we talked about? Do you find, uh, find it interesting? Why not? Sure. Yeah. So we <laughs> he's going to say yes anyways. <laughs> Let's do that. Yeah. So I am already in the, um, I'll, I'll actually re reiterate because let's start from like as if I'm in the source JDK folder. Uh, ooh. JDK, JDK 9. 9, yeah. OK, so we are outside the build folder. Let's go into the build folder. In the build folder, there's, a, there's another subfolder called Linux x86 normal. If you remember earlier, it had detected that I have got a Linux OS, the x86 architecture, 64-bit. This is a normal build, but we could do a debug build. Uh, we could also do a client build. This is a server build. So this basically that directory structure shows what uh, target platform you're building for. Exactly, yeah. So it, it, so it your, does. Your Linux box, x86. Yeah, yeah it, it categorizes it very well. Let's go into that folder. And there's, there, are, there are quite a few subfolders. This, this is interesting. So the most interesting of them for us is the images folder. Remember we use this command make images? The make images actually has told the build, build infrastructure process to actually go and create this folder. So let's go and see what's in that folder. So we have, oh, OK, we have the JDK and the JRE images earlier we spoke about. So that like gets, yeah. Let's look into what's into the JDK folder. And we have a, a slightly different structure, because I've noticed the conf, if you know, is not there in OpenJDK 8. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, or JDK 8. And in the lib folder, we have a new guest waiting for us to, mm -hmm. ex to explore. And who is the new guest over there? The new guest is none other than the modules folder. That's the modules folder. Let's I know, like Mark Reynolds. Yeah, so the RT jar that we spoke about earlier is now replaced with this modules folder. 
Now the modules folder's got three interesting J image files in there. Um, earlier, I also found there's a new command in the bin folder, which um, I hadn't seen in an earlier version of Java, and that is the J image. And this is how you use it. So it looks like it's look it's like a zip program or like a compression program, so like a, the, like jar. So the view is at home, Marty. I know, mm -hmm. like um, both uh, Mark Reinhold, Paul Sandals, Marcel both talked about the J image and the, and the module structure. Haven't okay. They? Which okay. is worth having to Google online if you want yeah, to know more yeah, backstory. Yeah. Exactly. Today. But we, like the J image is actually a zip file. Is that right? It, it looks jar, like or? it's like a jar program which does stuff slightly differently. We'll see in a second. So. Um, so I have the J image program and now I have access to the modules and I want to see what's in the boot image module. Uh, so the way to do that, I say J image list and the name of the J image file. Hey, that's a lot. Let's say tail. Uh, or let's say more. Uh, do you now recognize some of these classes? Because I think these are the classes you would find in RTJR. Like bootstrap classes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and interestingly, which is what I did earlier, was I did a grep to see if a random class is in there. Ah. Guess what? It is in there. That makes sense, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So earlier, when I mentioned to you, we could have actually compiled the random class in JDK9 and just inject it here and didn't have to wait 6 minutes, 41 seconds. Imagine if you did that for 10 classes. Compiling each class takes like under a millisecond and it takes another millisecond to in 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 inject that into the, the, the boot. But it saves some time, man. Yeah, rather, doing the whole rather than doing the six minutes. Uh, I don't know what the side effects would be, but I don't think that and, should and, be and bad. That's a good point, because the reason why it does um, rebuild everything is you can't always um, sort of reason about where the changes are going to actually affect, can you? So yes. if you change a class, it might ripple through the actual yeah. JDK. Yeah. So that's why when it... You, For when the you secure safety reasons, yeah. The whole build. So you have to be careful. I guess it's much like some of us probably have done it when we've used, like, say, Tomcat or whatever, opening up a war and chucking in a, you know, yeah. a, a class file. You can get away with it sometimes, sometimes you can. Yeah. Now, there's something else we, we found out earlier today at the... is I can actually extract this. So we, to prove that it's a module, it's a, it's a zip file or a jar file, we can actually act, extract this in a folder called boot modules folder. And you'll see there's a folder called boot modules folder. And that has the same content as what we did with the command earlier. If you saw earlier, all these packages are right in there. Mm -hmm. They've been now extracted as folders. So you can uh, have a look at the classes. Yeah, like yeah, them yeah. I could do my favorite tree command on there, <laughs> which I love doing. And then I can see, oh, I've done something wrong here. Yes, I have to specify a level. Three, two. So that's what the, what the boot images looks like, which is actually kind of a good part of our TGR right in there. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of people, this is probably be the first time they're seeing some of the Java or JDK 9 yeah. module. It's quite, uh, quite exciting, man. Quite it is, it is. So, sneaky, sneaky yeah. so I will be putting up the instructions on how to replace compiled classes into this. Of course, use it with caution, but it is going to save you 6 minutes 41 seconds in our case, and in some other cases, probably 10 minutes or something like that. A uh, question in from uh, uh, Omkar India. Yeah. Uh, asking about the native native method implementation. So is uh, wanting to see some native C, C++ uh, code interacting with the uh, operating system. So in terms of making those changes, rebuilding, presumably you just need to go through the same process. Is that right? Uh, it is. So the C, C++ files are mostly in the hotspot uh, repo, although you would find C++ files in other repos. I've seen it in, I think I've seen it in Lang tools, mm -hmm. but there probably might be other, yeah. yeah. Do you so, like garbage collection and all that kind of stuff? Yes. So yeah. mostly... So there's nothing in here? Nothing native here at all? Uh, in the Where's JDK the repo, there isn't. But let's quickly go into the hotspot repo. Uh, I'll have to somersault. I know some of your old documentation, Marty. You actually had a little um, sort of walkthrough, didn't you, of how you might alter the C++ code? Uh, yes, we have, we have a, a blog post on that. Yeah, so on, people could have a look at that. Yes, can they? yeah, and I that. have linked it onto the... Oh, you should tell them about the Git book, the, um, the Adopt Open JDK uh, book, which has got a link to the blog post that allows that shows you how you can change the hotspot code. It's not as scary as it might. I mean, it isn't. It's not as scary no. as my first thing. No, it, it isn't. It's fascinating to look through that. Yeah, it isn't. So let's let's look at since someone has brought up that question, let's look at Which one hotspot. Is that? Which book's that? Uh, that is the. Yeah, if you go in there. 
and then there's a link in there that you can just click on. If you scroll down, uh, that's the link you want to click on. Yeah, no, that on one. There. Yeah, it's it's actually on your VJuk page as well. Okay. So I'll, this uh, I'll is turn that yes, this is more or less what the um, hotspot folder looks like. Uh, what we could do is we could say grep. Dot cpb. Oh, I think it needs to be escaped. Or just ccp. The trick of doing live searches, isn't it? Uh, maybe I need to do five. Yeah, uh, sorry. Okay. So yes, that wasn't. It was a little bit deeper than that. So the the C plus plus folder, uh, folder C plus plus files are in the in this folder called, or among the other folders, it's under the architecture folder under the CPU folder, mm -hmm. under VM, and then these yeah. are all the C plus plus files. And the actual make images, uh, command money will yes, actually we'll, we'll recompile well. this yeah, as well. Jesus yes, uh, best if you're changing things in Hotspot, do a make clean image. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. Good, good or you yeah, could just do make images. Hotspot, which will build everything else that depends on Hotspot as well. Uh, it's it's very fairly smart, so you can't escape the builds. Mm -hmm. It no matter what you change, it'll know what what you've changed and fairly do everything again uh, and not miss out anything. So uh, yeah, that's 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 a good one, uh, Dan. Yeah, a whole lot of C++ files. They can spend years uh, studying them yeah, and changing really them. Yeah. yeah, and still not knowing what they do. <laughs> yeah. So 50, what about 15 minutes left? So uh, what else can oh, you show Oh, we do. Uh, Are you worth sharing the, um, some of the links, Marnie? The oh, yes. Just so we can, I'll show them at the end as well. Oh, yes, so... If you want to sort of have a read away. And exactly. Maybe so, ask some questions off that. Yeah, so in our presentation slides, we have um, a number of things we want to share with you, like the BetterF project we spoke about earlier. And that's the bit, bit bucket link to it. So it's what were the application technologies uh, stack used there? Java EE7? Yeah, um, Angular. I think Angular. On the end. We've gone through a few different versions of this. Um, but it's, um, it's worth having a pop along to the repo. Check yeah, it out. Yeah, clone um, the there's project. Some instructions there as well. Um, yeah. And if you're interested in getting involved, please do get in contact with us because we can exactly. certainly point you in the right direction. Sure. So, as with many open source projects, the documentation can be fluid, should we say sometimes? Can yeah, so absolutely. This is a project in, in progress, so any help that we get is, is appreciated. We always need extra hands to help, especially in the Java EE space. Uh, and the Node.js and the Angular.js and the, uh, all the other technology stack that it involves. So that's how to contribute to the BetterF project. Um, then you have the Getting Started Kit, which we spoke about earlier. I think uh, mm -hmm. Simon has already been proactive and shared the link. Uh, that's the, the, it's, it's been, it's been uh, nearly two years since October 2013, I would say, a little bit less than two years that I started working on this document, which was a massive Google Doc. And thanks to all the contributors, especially Sophia, I see Ivan in the crowd there. Uh, they, they contributed quite a bit, and it was, it was a bit messy document. And only recently, um, a few weeks ago, I converted that into a Git book where I put all this, reorganized everything. There's still a lot of stuff I want to contribute and add to it. So we're always looking for other contributions. Exactly. As much as like Ivan and Sveik have been amazing, we're always yeah. looking for other people to help. Absolutely. Uh, There's translation's so really important. Yeah. You're, if you're watching and you're for, um, yeah, sorry, English isn't your native language, yeah. please like, translate some of our stuff and, and you know, spread yeah. around your love community. That'd be very much so, so, so this is this is always interesting because it's like, when you, say, when you say we're always interested in people helping out, why should someone help out? Because obviously someone's going to have so many, so many different projects of their own. Why, why is someone going to take the time to do this? So what do you think, Dan? Um, I learned a lot by getting involved in this project three years ago. What did you learn in the last year and a half to... Yeah, uh, that is mine. Yeah, for me, son, it's a lot about... It's amazing seeing behind the curtains of actually like, something I've been coding in for like 10 years. That, that was awesome. I uh, Just like, from, a, from a sort of personal benefit. Um, and then it was really good. Uh, the community around FMJDK is probably the most exciting thing, as with a lot of these open source projects. Exactly. Um, the code is amazing, but the people are even more amazing. So I've learned so much. I've been connected with amazing people. I've traveled uh, the world. You know, something too grandiose there, but as in... Um, yeah, it's been some amazing opportunities to present in different countries, meet some interesting people, chat about ideas, money, and that's... Yeah. Um, yeah, there's so many reasons, actually, to get So, there. your question actually taps into what's your, what's your career history been in the last four years? That'll be like an indirect question to me. So, since I've been involved in the Open JDK, and so many avenues have opened for me uh, in my career, my knowledge about things, my confidence to do things hands-on. I didn't know anything about bash commands. Today, I write bash scripts like I would write any... Uh, any, any other language, uh, it, knowing the internals about Java, the garbage collection, the VM, a, a lot of the fundamentals that we normally ignore or we don't look at or we don't get a chance to look at, uh, this is the other bit of the 50% we don't know about. 
so these are the unknowns you would get to know about mm -hmm. get by getting involved in this project. And it only opens more avenues because I wouldn't be at this conference here talking to you. I wouldn't even have known you uh, or Daniel had I not been involved in this project. And, and all the conferences that invite me to, ha to show them uh, and, and share the knowledge about OpenJDK comes from being part of the OpenJDK. So that's a great, that's a great answer then. So Get involved because then you might get to know Daniel or me. Yeah, yeah. 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 So and you and you'll yeah. probably be on yeah. VJUG and night hacking yeah. at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, at a at a conference in Germany in a theme park. I, I all all like, put together. Maybe if you want to come with selfish reason, you know, reasons, I want to learn um, your X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Then you, you stay for the community. That's yeah. what I find. You yeah. know, people like just get, get involved, help your CV out, help your career out. Yeah. And then you actually realise you can do like you can start helping other people. Which yeah. Awesome. And you, do you find it's individuals that 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 supply patches or 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 people working for companies that have a vested interest in the, in, in the JDK? Both ways, both ways. Like Twitter, Goldman Sachs. Uh, there's there's a whole heap of companies who are contributing not only because they have done something amazing and they want to give it back. Because OpenJDK has been open source, they loved what was in there, they improved it, and now they want to give it back to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, On that note, Mali, it's actually a great question for yourself, Simon, because we often find it's easier to get involved at a JUG level, a Java mm -hmm. user group level, because um, as an individual, you know, the JDK and, and JVM is so big, um, there's only so much impact you, you can make sometimes, and it can feel quite daunting. So we do recommend, we've done quite a few sessions at Java 1 and other mm -hmm. sessions, we always say, um, get involved. If you've got a local Java user group, get in touch. Maybe there's something called Adopt JSR, which we're going to talk about tomorrow, and it's yeah. session in BJUG, or, or not yeah. just us, but Heather Bankura is going to talk about that. Yeah. But um, if you haven't got a local Java user group, maybe think about spinning one up. You can always reach out to any of us and, you know, yeah. and, and get advice on how to do that, because you can make so much more impact as a group. Um, and if your company's doing it, hey, that's even better, you know. Yeah. Um, but often you do find it's the bigger institutions that, that do this kind of thing. So, uh, and, and what would the so 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 let's say someone goes to their jug, how how would that how would they do that as a hack session, a hack day? Yeah, yeah I mean, tap us but, up for advice, yeah. money, can't they? Maybe? In London, we do it as a hack day. Uh, so every month for the last two years, John Stevenson from Haruku has been hosting. Uh, yeah, there's one. There's one happening in uh, in April, 25th of April, in uh, the Hack the Tower Hack Hack Day in in uh, the Sales Tower of Salesforce office. And what we do is we just get together, uh, you know, and share the knowledge and, and a lot of documentation that we've collected helps. And a lot of experienced people who hang around also help. So mm -hmm. and. Everybody can get started these days because there's all the resources you need available yeah, compared to like two, um, three years ago. Like Java.net and a few other websites, we've actually put how to run a hack day up. Uh, we've yeah. got like, a few yeah. of us got presentations, yeah. uh, documentation up there. Mm -hmm. I ran a um, JSR uh, Money and Currency. Uh, we all ran a yes. hack day in London. London and we yeah. sort of spun off some VMs and virtual machines containing the code and that. We gave some advice on how others, and we actually got a really nice email the other day, Marnie, didn't we? Yes. On the adoption discuss mail list saying, hey, Marnie, Daniel, really appreciate you putting all your material online. We yeah. ran a hack day in Canberra, Brazil or somewhere. Yeah. Remote, wouldn't it? We're like, that's brilliant. Someone's taken our, exactly. our yeah. learnings and code and we've helped someone else. And that, that's a great feeling. Yeah, it is, a, it is a good, and, and that they were able to use it without even having to uh, rely on us, like independently, which is, which is what really you cool. Yeah, which is what you become once you get involved. You, you become independent because... It's, it it is like, uh, again, that's saying too cliche. It's a properly global effort, man. It's a lot it goes is. on in the States, a lot yeah. goes on in the UK, but a huge amount goes on in, in South America, uh, all over Europe. We mentioned, you know, uh, Sophia Jug already, and mm -hmm. lots of other jugs. So yeah. It genuinely is a worldwide um, endeavor, and you can meet some wicked people. Like, Absolutely, you know, yeah. Cool. Uh, just to also say that the, the the getting started kit is like a git is a git book, written in Markdown and it's hosted on a on a GitHub repo. So you can actually fork the repo, make changes to it, and create a pull request. Add your 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 chapters to it and create a pull request. When I accept it, it'll become part of the the, the open open JDK getting started kit book. On a fork and pull, money. Exactly, and it's an ever growing effort. Um, not last but not the least is. Definitely become involved with one of these mailing lists, especially the adoption discussing mailing list. We talk all and everything about OpenJDK on that. We also cover some bits on the London Java community. There's, there are messages about um, OpenJDK now and the then, LJC but mostly mainly sort of a local, like London-based. Yeah, I mean, we've got a few people from other but countries involved. The adoption discuss is definitely the place, place to, to go, and, to yeah. go and, and, and open up an account uh, and watch the messages and then basically participate. So with that, we'd like to say that we need you for JDK development. We've been saying this for quite some time, and uh, we will repeatedly saying that. So you, me, and everybody is required for the JDK development. Follow the Twitter handle, because all our OpenJDK, Adopt OpenJDK and Java messages, news is shared on there. Um, and we have put together a whole lot of resources that uh, everybody should um, 
Cool on, have yeah, look. have a look and maybe share it with their community. And with these slides, you're going to get hold of these resources. It's it's on a on a blog post, uh, but a lot of these are very useful resources. Yeah. Just going back to your previous slide, Martin, yeah. and also touching on something Simon mentioned earlier on, as in like a lot of us really enjoy working with Java, don't we? So we yeah. want to uh, help sort of guide it for the future. I know like uh, the LJC did quite a lot of work with um, date and time and some of the Lambda stuff. Yeah. Where, like you genuinely can make a difference. Like I consider Java my native programming language, mm -hmm. so I'd love to see it uh, be successful into the future. And um, you know, so get using doing this kind of thing can actually help steer some of that kind of Absolutely, really yeah. Cool, yeah. Another question from the Vijog uh, Serkan Turgut. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm suffering finding documentation of internals of Hotspot, how interpreter and the JIT works. Um, so, in other words, which class does what? So, I guess a more general, high-level navigation of a source tree. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any suggestions for, for that? Or, in, or in, in, I guess, in general, where would you go to look for documentation for, for trying to... Trying to uh, one thing's worth mentioning, money. there is plenty of mailing lists. Uh, yes. If anything, too many mailing lists. Yes. But um, you can ask us for advice. If you're interested in something, ping a list, uh, sorry, ping an email to the mailing list we mentioned before, um, adoption discuss, and we can point you in the right direction. Um, there's many spec leads on the JSRs, there's many people that are interested uh, sort of steward various bits of the JDK. Yeah. So that would be um, a good start. Ask us, and we can either point you in the right direction or we can ask them. Um, there is a fair bit of documentation online, Marty, and it? sometimes it's finding it. It is. So um, basically, I actually have put that here. Um, so, so the Adopt OpenJDK uh, Getting Started Kit is the best place to start because it not only has the link to the first very simple hands-on project on how to change the change hotspot, mm -hmm. since his question is related to hotspot, but there's also links to uh, projects and mailing lists, and I learned massively, massive stuff from mailing lists because you watch the messages, you may not understand it, but after a while, you get a hang of what they're talking about, and that's, that's the way, yeah, right, exactly, so yeah. yeah, and that's the best way to start. Watch mailing lists, watch messages, you don't have to understand in the beginning, but eventually you build, our mind is sharp enough to build up and associate one message with the other, and, and for something as massive and serious as the hotspot, you need a little bit of time to, to grasp it. Uh, source code is the best documentation. I don't know if people uh, yeah. do that, but if, if that's too hard for you, start the mailings with their mailing list. Look at look at the links that are posted in the in the Getting Started Kit. Follow them and then go back to the mailing list and then maybe take some courage and look at the code. Because mm -hmm. the hotspot code is not really uh, uh, difficult to understand. It's fairly simple uh, code. In fact, one of my slides, which I will show you just now because he's raised that uh, question, actually shows you that the hotspot source code is not as daunting as we would think it is. Is that a reduced version of mine? Uh, it is the reduced version, but uh, we do have the... the so that's so why you're looking at that, I'll summarize in, in what you were saying, which is, which is pretty much, for those of you who want to get involved, um, I guess first try for your for your jug. Talk to talk to your Java user group, local Java user group. See who are, who else is interested. If there's a hack session that's available, if not, maybe try try and create one. Um, if not, try and contact people who are already on on the right wavelength, like you guys, who you can either help or point you in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. So so back to the question on the C plus plus or the hotspot. This is a code snippet from the hotspot code base, mm -hmm. uh, and if you look at it, I mean anybody can understand. What's, what's going on in there. I mean, it's fairly English. The variables are very well named. The methods are very well named. There's very good, uh, simple documentation in there, plus the layout is understandable. And you open up a C++ code in any decent editor, it'll color code it for you, so you won't have a hard time understanding what's happening in this, in this block of code here. I mean, it's so simple. It's uh, saying that if the, serial, if the use serial GC flag is switched on, do this. Do the, do the mark and sweep uh, process. If it's not, then if the concurrent mark and sweep is switched on, then if I have compiled this bit in there, because there's compiler directives in there in C++, you've got to appreciate that. You need to understand that as well. And then depending on if the use adaptive sizing is switched on, then use the adaptive sizing concurrent mark and sweep. Otherwise, use the current concurrent mark and sweep. And then you, deep, you know, dive deep into those methods to see how it goes. So I would walk through this way and try to understand what's going on. Uh, and of course, rely on the on the documentation. But the source code is the is the final documentation. Uh, if you don't have any other documentation to hand, okay, okay, awesome. So I'll let you I'll let you go. We've got just a couple of minutes left, so I'll let you guys close in just a sec. Yeah. Uh, maybe summarize. Uh, what I, one thing I will say while you, while you guys think about that is um, is if uh, if anyone in the in the virtual jug is is very interested in this and wants to start a, a, a mini hack group on the on the virtual jug or Perhaps one thing we could do is uh, maybe I could just nip into London every now and then and, and 
uh, and, and maybe stream some of the work that John does across the virtual yeah. jug as well. Yeah, maybe we yeah, could do something else to get others involved. Um, uh, let me know, and uh, we can sort that out. So, um, so guys. Yeah. Cheers. Ooh. In terms of closing stuff, I think my like worth picking that slide up again with all the references. But yes, um, that's the that's, that's the best thing. That's the last. Can yes. any other us Whoops. Then, yeah, that's the last slide you want to go on, which has links to all the resources. Uh, there's a resource section on at the bottom of this link, and uh, that has all the resources you could think of of uh, getting hold of. Uh, and I've, uh, I've posted that good. into IRC as well, so yeah. so that others don't have to type it. Yeah. Um, that's, cool. That's awesome. Well, thank you very right. very much, Daniel. Thank thanks, you, Simon, uh, and thanks to Steve for uh, hosting um, us. And thanks very much. Yeah. So a big thanks to Javaland for for letting us for letting us do this here. Big thanks for uh, to, to Night Hacking for letting us use their stage and, and Stephen. Um, <laughs> Yeah, thanks guys for, for giving us a session and we'll be back same time next time tomorrow. Yeah. Which is with uh, which is with Heather and we're gonna be talking about uh, three different JSRs, uh, which are going into uh, into the future of Java, so you can see what's uh, what's coming up and what's what's to look forward to and, and how how you can make a difference and uh, and help that going forward. So thanks very much guys. Thanks, Enjoy thanks, the rest of Java. Thanks, Steve. Yeah,